All right. Um, I'm sorry to our viewers of uh, Sober Sunday. Uh, we had a little technical issue today, uh, but I'm so excited about our conversations today. I'm sure that um, uh, you're logging in. I want to invite you to invite all your friends today as we talk about love, love, money, and uh, uh, love and money. Uh, the role of money in relationships, in love, and in marriage uh, with a very excellent uh, guest uh, today. And just want to invite you to uh, bring in your friends, uh, host a watch party. Let's have a conversation. Uh, today, I think it's going to be very exciting. So uh, in spite of us being a little late, I'm sure we're going to enjoy ourselves. And so joining me today is the amazing Kaleche Mumo. I think uh, most of you would know her. Uh, she's a media personality, uh, talks a lot about relationships, and um, she has hosted me in our show. And I've enjoyed just having those conversations about men and their role in relationships. So we're very glad to have you, Kaliche. Uh, very excited that you are able to join in. So go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit more and tell us uh, what you do. Thank you so much. Uh, it is an honor and a pleasure to be here and uh, just in the presence of uh, people who I respect so much. So thank you so much for having me. I, uh, has, as you've said, actually, I don't even know what to add. Um, having been a media personality, one of the things I love uh, talking about is relationships and how our role as individuals really matters to building our relationships. So that's what I do on a show called uh, Live and Uncut, which is uh, on YouTube. I'm also doing that currently on uh, Instagram Live. And the show is uh, KM Radio that comes Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. And so other than that, I run a small organization called KM Network, and the aim is to just build content that is geared at changing people's perspectives. So that's what I'm doing. Excellent, excellent. Well, we are very also excited to have a couple together with us, my own pastors, uh, senior pastors of Mavuna Church, uh, great friends. And uh, they talk a lot about couples and money. So we have uh, uh, the best guests uh, for this conversation. So the Moridis, yeah, you're welcome. Pastor Em and Pastor Carol, uh, welcome very much. We're glad to have you here. Go ahead and say hi to us and say a bit about yourselves and some of the things you do around couples and money. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Simon. And this is my second time, so thank you mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, for, for having me. That time I was alone, but today I'm with uh, Pastor Moridi. So thank you so much, and I'm glad uh, to be here with uh, Kalecha Mumo. I just look forward to also just uh, hearing what she has to say, learning from her. And so thank you so much. Um, I am uh, a marriage and family therapist and uh, also an executive pastor at uh, Mavuno Church. And... Um, have uh, co-authored uh, the um, uh, online course called uh, Couples and Money. This is a 10-week course uh, online. Uh, couples get to watch the videos, but it's much more than that. I think it's a mentoring program. So couples are mentored <clears throat> by other couples. Um, and um, it has just been an amazing uh, thing to watch as people's lives have been changed. So that's one of the things that I do. And thank you so much, Pastor uh, Simon. Uh, well, I'm, thank you, I'm husband. Uh, I think it's good for me to say that. And uh, I, um, apart from serving at Mavuno Church, uh, also uh, write, so an author of several books, and also um, just love to motivate people. Um, my passion is leadership, and um, Carol's passion is family. And so somehow we found a connection there. Uh, which is why we do a lot with couples um, and just building leadership among couples. Uh, but in addition, we're entrepreneurs and we are passionate about seeing society change. So um, yeah, great to be here. I'm glad, my, I'm, I'm glad after my wife, she, she must have done a good job. Now we got invited together. <laughs> No, she was excellent as always. So uh, I'm sure you're going to be as excellent as well. So, <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> How long have you been married? 
I will be married 26 years this year. Okay, well, wow. 26 years, that's a, yeah. a good experience. Uh, well, let's get down into uh, the conversation. Uh, I see a lot of you have checked in already. Again, we apologize for starting off late. A uh, little technical hitch. Uh, welcome to this um, stimulating conversations uh, with me, Simon Bevy. Uh, so, Kaliche, let's begin with you. Uh, no romance without finance. Is that true? <laughs> Wow, takes me back to a song back in the 80s. But um, I think, I think uh, it's a bit um, tricky and contentious. And of course, as, as a single people, the perspective mm -hmm. that we have is that in order for there to be a relationship, we have to be able to be building each other. And so I'll mm -hmm. speak on my own behalf um, as a woman who's um, built a career, worked hard, you know, I was taught that you have to uh, as a woman also get your own things and don't wait for a guy to be the one to come and take care of you. And I mean, I'll call that out on our parents, our generation of parents who really, um, the, the ladies grew up depending on their husbands. And so they didn't want their daughters to go through the same things. And so my mother brought mm -hmm. me up to understand that you must get your own. And so what mm -hmm. she didn't tell me is now when you get your own, are you going to find someone who has his own? Are you at the same level? Should he have more? And I seem to remember being told he should earn at least a shilling more than you. And so that's mm -hmm. the perspective that I would go with. I'm like, let's at least be able to be at par so that we can build each other. Not necessarily you're taking care of me, but I mm -hmm. am able to bring something to the table. That's how uh, I look at it. Okay. Uh, all right, we'll, we'll get back to you. I mean, that's a, a good statement there. And at least a, sh at least a shilling more than you uh, to feel like it's a little ahead. Uh, Pastor Carol, there are a lot of um, uh, men today uh, because I deal a lot with men uh, through the Man Enough program. And by the way, in case you'd like to get involved with the Man Enough program, uh, we are online. We're doing it uh, currently. Uh, feel free to give your details on our page and you'll get to know more about uh, that and be able to sign up. But uh, Pastor Carol, as we have talked with a lot of men, if I recently I was in a, uh, in a Zoom call with about 100 men and I asked them, how many of you would marry someone who earns as you or a little bit more than you um and it was like five ten hands uh, oh, that wow. went up uh, the majority feel uh scared or they feel uh this woman who wants more has a lot it's going to be powerful because a lot of men 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 see money as power uh, i know for women money is more than like security but for men they see it as power and they feel like if i don't have as much or i don't have more then i don't feel like i have power in this relationship is that even a right way of thinking now that's that's very interesting because the women of nowadays are uh, mm -hmm. like Kaleche, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Kaleche, even as you talk, I was raised in the same way where mm -hmm. I was told, um, I was taught to, you know, you, you come in and you have something that you're offering uh, on the table. And, mm -hmm. um, and so what happens is that women tend to stoop low. Um, mm -hmm. someone may be able to afford a, a Mercedes and they decide, let me just go with a Toyota just so that mm -hmm. I do not scare men away. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, maybe I could just go back to what my mother taught me. <laughs> and she said, mm -hmm. um, don't stoop low, you know, mm -hmm. buy that Mercedes. Let that man find you with a Mercedes. You would rather mm -hmm. have somebody who is secure right from the start uh, being with you and, and being comfortable with the fact that you have a Mercedes mm -hmm. rather than, you know, you stooping low and then him discovering that things are not as you had said. So mm -hmm. I, I think that is, that, that is what I would say. Uh, but mm -hmm. even having said that, I, I love the fact that you're saying that for men, money is seen as a power thing, whereas for women, it's for security. And so I, I believe that then um, for both men and women, we need to be careful about uh, money and how we view it. Do we view it as, some, as a power tool? Do we see it as, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I have more money and therefore I, I can dominate you. And you know, this goes either way for men and women. And yeah. um, 
Yeah, so I, I think there's, there's, a, there's a place for us to be careful, uh, whatever uh, gender that we are, not to rule over the other person, mm -hmm. because really that's a twisted way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Well, past time. Um, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I was, I was going to make a comment. I was going to say, you know, when, whenever I hear uh, that notion that I will lose power because, you know, you can't be controlled because mm. you earn more or that you have the ability to earn and you drive that car. And then I'm mm. like, um, you know, to the men here, I'm going to ask you, is the aim to get a wife that you're going to control or a partner? Mm. That's my question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well said, well said. And, and past time, I mean, uh, you guys wrote the amazing door experience uh, that uh, lots of couples have gone through before they get married. Um, as you have worked with different couples, what do you find is uh, one big struggle before couples get married when it when it comes to discussions around money because i know that's that's a big deal you know they're coming together they are they need to start conversations on how they're going to spend their money together uh, there are different arguments they should have a joint account maybe they shouldn't uh ladies being told by their aunties you've got to keep a secret account uh so that in case something goes wrong uh you know that you uh you go with something uh, but uh, what are the main concerns maybe one or two main concerns for couples uh, who are dating uh, preparing to get married and things that they should check uh, before they put the ring on the finger yeah before i answer let me just say that i would um i'll be very happy for carol to be a very rich woman uh i don't mind living a retired life of ease and being looked after by this woman so just just to put that on the record i don't mind that and i'd be very happy to enjoy being on the golf course and being looked after by this great woman so just to put that out there for any men who are uh, struggling with that question but anyway uh the other thing i'll also say is uh, uh i think for many couples one of the blind spots is we don't understand how determined we are by our family of origin in how we view money Mm -hmm. So we actually come in to build a house as two architects, building the same house with two sets of plans. And we don't realize that these plans were pre precast for us. We came in, everybody came in with their map. This is how the house, my dream house looks like. And you're both dreaming, building your dream house, but it's not mm -hmm. the same dream house. And what you don't realize is that the script was set for you before, before you came into it. And so mm -hmm. when you hear your spouse's approach, it's threatening. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because you don't understand it. Your way is the right way because that's the only way you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's mm -hmm. the one of the biggest challenges we find for many couples is it's just impossible to have a conversation because one of you speaks French, one of you speaks English. And you don't even understand <laughs> you're speaking two different languages. You're speaking at each other, not with each other. So yeah. um, one of the things that we uh, try and do with couples and money is to train couples to, first of all, learn the language, <laughs> agree on what language they're speaking. <laughs> and then now start speaking together safely, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's the first biggest hurdle is understanding the role of your family of origin and your spouses, and then understanding that my way is not better than yours. It's just a way. And your way is not better than mine. It's just a way. So let's examine both ways and pick the things that work for us so that we work as a team. So that's the mm -hmm. first thing, just getting you on the same playing field uh, mm -hmm. is the biggest mm -hmm. thing, biggest hurdle I find for mm -hmm. couples. The second big deterrent for couples working together and biggest hurdle is their temperaments. Again, couples don't mm -hmm. understand temperaments and how you're temp you have a money temperament. And mm -hmm. then that shapes how you think of money. Some people are just naturally hoarders and they don't even understand why. You know, a hoarder mm -hmm. goes to the ATM and they just look at the, they just see money and they see zeros and they just feel peace on earth. <laughs> they don't even understand that that for them is security, you know. And yeah. when they marry somebody else who comes from a different money temperament, which is probably a spender. And for them, mm -hmm. when they buy new clothes, they feel peace on earth and goodwill to all men. Now here you are, you're trying to put <laughs> clothes together. They don't understand that this person's different and that they come with it. So one of the things, that, the, the biggest hurdles then is getting couples to not see each other as the enemy, but mm -hmm. to understand each other. And then to understand, yeah. even with the different temperament, their strengths that your mm -hmm. temperament brings to this marriage or this relationship, yeah. their strengths that mine mm -hmm. brings. So how do we mm -hmm. take the strengths of each of us? And then there are also weaknesses. How do we allow our spouse to become our helper in the areas where we need help? So, yeah. 
I guess wow. those are some of the well, well, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you. Maybe I'll, I'll ask you something. I mean, there's someone who is asking, Yambura Awambogo is saying, getting on the same view. Uh, and several other people are saying that's a good point. But um, how do you get to that point? Because some people mm. are afraid uh, just to talk about their money because they don't know, maybe they don't fully trust you. And uh, if they expose too much, uh, you know, they are going to be in trouble. Uh, so there's just a lot of fear around this money issue. So how do you encourage the couples to talk about this even before they put the ring on? Yeah. Um... I think what we do is that we take people through our process. Uh, mm. By the time that you're coming to have what we call money dates, uh, we have to take you through our process of self-discovery. And once you discover, oh my goodness, this is why I, I think this way about money. This is, what, this, is, mm. uh, this is the way that I was raised up and therefore this is the way I think mm. about money. For example, mm. even the whole mm. thing of disclosing or not disclosing, uh, mm. truly is, uh, is is really a reflection of the way that you were brought up. I mean, mm. guys could have been brought up with the whole thing of your money is your money. Mm. Uh, your wife need not know. Uh, you know, you, you mm. can be the provider, but your mm. wife need not know the details. You see, that yeah. is a that you're bringing with you from your family of origin. Yeah. So we mm. uncover first those kinds of things uh, so that mm. we can say, what does the Bible say, you know, about uh, oneness um, and about trust and, and being trustworthy. But we take you through mm -hmm. that kind of a journey where you even understand mm -hmm. your thinking, mm -hmm. the origin of your thinking in the first place. Yeah. I think self-awareness is so important because mm -hmm. the problem is you don't know and you don't even know that you don't know, you see. So a bigger part of it is even just helping you begin to understand. Because sometimes when the lights come on and you're like, ah, yeah. that's why I act this way. That's why my spouse acts this way. It's not that he's evil. It's uh, that there, he's different <laughs> and he comes uh, from, from a different background. He comes from where he has a different temperament um, uh -huh. and he thinks differently. Also, and I, by the way, one, one third had I didn't even talk about was gender. That's another whole different story because genders yeah. have different ways to see things. Huh? Men are from Mars, uh -huh. women are from Venus. So once you begin to understand these differences, uh -huh. then hopefully what it does, and because we do things in the context of group, uh, mm -hmm. As a woman, you're able to see, oh, you mean all other women are frustrated just like I am about that issue. It's not like my husband is the one who's evil mm -hmm. incarnate. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> men are like that. Oh, okay. So I find that people relax when they begin to become self-aware. And okay. when they begin to realize that's who I am. They own themselves. They own their issues. Mm -hmm. They own their mm -hmm. strengths, but they also own their weaknesses. And I feel like then the fight stops and it, start, it stops becoming yeah. the other person's problem, starts becoming, let me work on me, mm -hmm. as Kaleta was saying earlier yeah. uh, in the conversation yeah. we're having. Like, it's so important to start working on you uh, because mm -hmm. you can't fix your spouse. I think that's the most humble thing that anybody realizes. Mm -hmm. It just takes yeah. a few, uh, being in a relationship a couple of times and you're like, wow, you, I, I, I usually say, you can't even fix your own kids. How humble. <laughs> I think you can fix it away. You can't. No. <laughs> the best thing we always tell people is uh, work on me, pray mm. for them. Mm. Unfortunately, yeah. what we normally do is we work on them and then pray for me. Uh, yeah. And that's just a mess. It doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. Insanity. Doing the same thing over and over, hoping you change them and you can't change a human mm. being. Most humbling realization in the world, the only person, the only human I can change is me. Mm, and when I yeah. have to change, then my mm. partner, typically what happens is there are two children having a fight over here. One of them matures mm. because they start working mm. on themselves. The other one is left as the only child in a marriage. It's a sad thing to be mm. the only child. Eventually, you're going, <laughs> the pressure will force you to grow up as well. And so the only way to change your spouse is to change yourself. Yeah. So those are some of the things yeah. that we say. To people. And so even when you're dating, a, a big part mm. of it is also understanding you will marry. And this is one of the humblest things we realize. You marry mm -hmm. at the level of your maturity. Mm -hmm. wow. That is the most startling thing you'll ever find out in life. Anybody mm -hmm. who comes and complains to you about their spouse later and tells you, oh, this mm -hmm. guy's an alcoholic, I'll uh, say the signs were there. The only reason you didn't see them is because you had a complementary and equal dysfunction. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You had the need to be needed. You, you are codependent. So you attracted mm -hmm. a guy who was an alcoholic. That's the thing. So if you're blaming mm -hmm. him as the, as the problem part of the reason is you didn't realize you had a problem as well so we yeah. say to people who are dating the yeah. more you grow your own emotional maturity the more mm. you begin to become self-aware of the areas you need to change 
then uh -huh. the better a spouse you will be. Why? Because you'll attract a person who's as mature as you. Uh, when somebody who's immature comes across you, they will run. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't fit in this relationship. You, uh, you'll be too much for them. Losers. Yeah. <laughs> you need to start asking, what is it about me that is making me attractive yeah. to guys? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, well could that explain uh, something to me? Because, uh, uh, you know, if they keep running, then they are not as mature. What is going on in my life? <laughs> no, 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 no. They are probably a certain <laughs> level of maturity. Like I can't have. <laughs> okay. But yes, so, I think but, I, I agree. Kaliche, yeah. yeah, yeah. So Kaliche, I think as I come to you, uh, talking about immaturity, um, yeah. there's some of the you know uh, things that we see with people who are dating nowadays, which are really bad manners. Uh, and now that you deal with relationships a lot, I mean, I've had some uh, ladies who have said they knew a guy after two dates, he was already borrowing money from them. And then he, dis he disappeared with their money and they gave that money. Uh, or maybe even some ladies who become gold diggers, they get very close yeah. to this guy, uh, fleece him of some money and go away. Yeah. What, are, what are some of the uh, foolish mistakes or bad manners that we are seeing nowadays around relationships and dating uh, from the singles that you talk with? I think, um, first of all, I, I'll talk about that element of where um, a woman is, is uh, reached a point where she gets so gullible that she gives off her money. Mm. I think mm -hmm. having been there myself and having made that mistake myself, mm. I think um, half the time it comes with the need to really have somebody like you and you really want a relationship to work. And um, mm -hmm. just as Pastor Marie said, sometimes you are blinded because of your own selfish personal need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so when I look back mm -hmm. at the, the instances where that happened to me, I mm -hmm. probably really wanted this guy to be in my life. And so by the time mm -hmm. it reached the point, he's asking me for money. And I was, you know, you have that red alert in your head. The flag has mm -hmm. gone up. But you're like, but, you know, I mean, we, we like each other, so it's okay. And you end up giving your money. But what I discovered is that soon after, these people, they, they disappear. Once they get the, the money they wanted, they either disappear or they continue to find ways to get you mm -hmm. to give more money. And so mm -hmm. when it comes from the, the, the male perspective, they look and see if mm -hmm. this girl is so desperate for a relationship, if she's so mm -hmm. desperate to be loved because she doesn't understand mm -hmm. how to either love herself or mm -hmm. that she's already loved enough by God and by the people around her. She doesn't need a man to mm -hmm. tell her that you are loved, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. it will be okay. But when you meet somebody who has that Allow, and okay, they end okay. up allowing themselves to get into it yeah mm -hmm. that's when they end up allowing themselves to get into into that situation when it comes mm -hmm. to the vice versa the mm -hmm. conversation i get from the young girls is that they believe that they need to be taken care of because the mm -hmm. bible even says a man mm -hmm. is a provider and so mm -hmm. you know then mm -hmm. the question to them i ask is is he a provider of finances or a provider of a general life, you know, uh, security and companionship and, 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 mm -hmm. and all those other things, or is it just about the money? So my, my biggest um, back and forth with the, the young people is that if mm -hmm. you are demanding for him to have money, do you have the equal same money to put on the table as well? You can't mm -hmm. demand a life you can't even provide for yourself. Mm -hmm. The majority mm -hmm. of them want things that, they see um, other people having. You say, this one I can tell you for free, the media, what the media is showing, what's happening mm -hmm. on social media. And so mm -hmm. you have people saying, but Kaleche, I want what you have. And I'm like, I have worked for over 20 years plus to get mm -hmm. where I am. I didn't mm -hmm. start here. You know? mm -hmm. In my twenties, I was earning 8,000 bob after graduating. Mm -hmm. and walking very many miles to get to work so I save that little mm -hmm. money you know mm -hmm. but they want mm -hmm. it now so it also yeah. comes back to what what kind of generation are we bringing up what are we mm -hmm. teaching them in terms of mm -hmm. you get what you want when you ask for it okay so okay. I don't know where the disconnect is yeah mm -hmm. 
So Kalichi, a lot of uh, young ladies, they say uh, to the men, your money is our money, my money is my money. Mm-hmm. Do you believe in that? And where did that come from? Ooh, <laughs> you just put me on the spot. Um, <laughs> well, where did that come from? I think for a lot of, of us, it came from seeing what you thought, you know, of course, <clears throat> Uh, our generation of parents never showed us the real intricacies of how their marriage was working. I don't remember mm-hmm. a time where it was said, but it looked like my dad was doing everything. And so therefore mm-hmm. I grew up thinking that that's what's supposed to happen. And my mother uses mm-hmm. her money to do her things, including feeding us, which is fine, buy food for the house. Mm-hmm. It's not expensive. Mm-hmm. And then uh, do her own things. So that, that comes, I think, from what you may have seen growing up. And the mm-hmm. fact that there have been some men who will actually spoil a woman with everything she needs. Right now, the what I'm getting from the guys is that they mm-hmm. can't be in a relationship if they don't have any money at all. Like they need mm-hmm. to have a lot of money. And I'm like, if you have a certain amount of money, you've just finished uh, campus, you've started your first job, and maybe you're mm-hmm. earning 25,000, 30,000, then you should not be dating a girl who is expecting a 100,000 delivery Yet, you know, is she making the same money? So mm. leveling the play field. So they say that the younger girl is the mm-hmm. problem because she wants more than she can make um, and, and expects it for her to even have an open conversation with you. If, if she asks the question, what are you driving? Like on date one, they say, yeah, the questions mm. are, what are you driving? Where do you mm. live? You know, and such things. And so it kind of throws off the men. So I... I I feel mm. like it's such an unfair way to look at things, but this mm. is what they're thinking. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah and uh, a lot of men go and get thrown off. I have heard from a lot of men who say, you're dating a woman and before date three, uh, they're already giving you their needs. You know, I have this problem, I need some money for the rent and this and the other. And the man is just thinking, are you just seeing me for what I can provide? Or is there a relationship here? Uh, mm. Pastor Carol, uh, you know, there are a few people, thank you to all of you who are watching, um, uh, many of you responding. We just don't have the time to read everything, but Gitao uh, Mushugia said, I agree with Pastor M, a perspective towards money uh, were precast in the family of origin. Uh, and learning and relearning is key. Does be able to learn to work together. Uh, but then Pastor Carol would okay uh, us. How do you handle a couple prefers investing with their siblings rather than the partner? Does this mean lack of trust? And how do you handle that? I see. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot for that. I think um, uh, we always talk and we ask the question, you may be married, but is your money married? Mm -hmm. Uh, Have you come to understand uh, the power that the two of you have when you put together your Mm -hmm. money? Uh, When Mm -hmm. we look uh, even at corporates, I think about uh, 50% of multinationals are actually family run or family owned businesses. Mm -hmm. These are families that came together and um, they understood the power of working together. And there they are, we are working for them. So the problem I I think in our context is that because we we are very fragmented or we have not had an understanding of um, just the power of working together as as a couple, then we have that, that a fragmented way of uh, even spending our money and even viewing our money. And so the first mm-hmm. question I would ask is, is your money married? Because if it is mm-hmm. not, uh, mm-hmm. then what we say is that honestly, you're missing out the power that exists mm-hmm. when two people agree and they, and they, and they decide to work together uh, to put mm-hmm. up significant investments. And that mm-hmm. can only come when two people <clears throat> and work together. So that's what they are okay. missing. Yeah. Okay. First time, how does money get married? And what is the best way of approaching, uh, you know, money as a couple in terms of um, planning together, investing together? Uh, do you split the roles and say you do this, I do that? Uh, what uh, what works? 
I think the first thing I tell a couple is invest in your, in, you know, couples spend a lot of money investing in their wedding, preparing to spend money for a wedding. But couples often don't spend time investing in their marriage before they're married, which means uh, studying together, doing a premarital course. Uh, that's why we wrote Ndoa, and that's a great course, but there are others out there. So that you're able to actually ask yourself the really important questions, and you set some things in place before. Um, I always tell people you trust somebody with your life, you trust them to with your with with your body, and then your money you don't. Yeah. I mean, what kind? How do you, I mean? How do you put money above your health? Borrow high, you know. It's like your life is more important <laughs> than your money, and so that's one of the things. If you can't trust somebody, you have no business even entering a relationship. With them. And mm. so, so I, I think one of the things that we talk to couples who are uh, dating or who are uh, courting and getting engaged. We always say mm -hmm. you need to actually understand their money background, uh, mm -hmm. have those conversations about how their parents sold money, mm -hmm. how, what money meant in their family. Let them understand mm -hmm. what it means for you. Begin to understand your roles because their family ascribed roles. These are some of the things we're talking about family of origin. Some of us have roles mm -hmm. where your family has ascribed to you the role of you're the one who's educating your younger siblings. Uh, mm -hmm. You come into this relationship with a spouse who doesn't know that you have a role. Huh? So of course, what yeah. you're either going to do is you're going to be doing it and she's arguing against it, then you're going to go behind her back because you don't want her to know now. So mm -hmm. be as clear as you can and as open as you can when you're dating because now it allows you to get <clears throat> marry somebody with all their baggage and you come in understanding what that is. The beauty mm -hmm. of that when it happens, and I'll give you an example, when we got married, we've had situations, we've been married 26 years, we've had situations where uh, I've had a job, Carol hasn't. And so she basically uh, was home, looked after the kids. Uh, mm -hmm. I was working and bringing the money. I mean, we were both working, rather, rather. Let me not even say that because she was working, looking after the kids. I was working yeah. in the world out there. But we've also had situations where she's been the one earning and I've been a student and I've been a kept man. I mean, I was home. She's the one who was bringing <laughs> the bacon. But because right from the beginning, we had made commitments uh, we have a, we've always had a joint account. We always knew that money came into a common pot and then we got allowances out of that. Uh, she always got the high allowance ever since we got married. Why? Because look at her hair and look at mine. I mean, that should really tell you allowances should be different. You know, I can't even compete. So, so we, we agreed on, on, on what each person needs. And, we, and because of that, it meant that even though she had the money, she, she was earning the money. She didn't have the power. I saw somebody yeah. asking that question in the, in the, in, in the, yeah. on the panel. When she, when she has more money, does she have more power? More power. That's yes. never been, but it's because the foundation was built from the beginning. Now, if you come in mm. and then later on, wait, wait too late to start asking those questions, uh, um, mm -hmm. what you're going to find is then money becomes a very threatening conversation. Uh, and mm -hmm. it should, as Caro says, you go so much farther when you go together. Uh, when, you, when you go separately and each of you is doing your own little thing, uh, you end up living a very mediocre financial life. And I think our conviction yeah. is couples, African couples, we should, what do you have in common with Bill and Melinda Gates? You are created to be philanthropists. You are created to be donors. You are created to make a difference as a, as a couple. And many of yeah. us will never get there because we are, we are fighting within. And that means you'll never yeah. achieve your potential together. So mm -hmm. I think that's, you owe it to yourselves to actually bring that oneness uh, in your money okay. and stuff. Okay. I'm I coming to you, uh, Kaleche, so that you can also tell us uh, some of the... Uh, Kaleche, Kaleche uh, has a question. Yeah, yes. I have a question. I have a question. Uh, because, I mean, a, a lot of the stuff uh -huh. um, that I hear you talk about uh, that you teach in Ndoa, to me, it comes at a time where we've already said we're getting married and we've come for these classes. So my question has been to a lot of um, the churches, what are you doing about teaching people before they get into this situation? No, no, we're already coming to you because we have already said we're engaged. We've already said we're getting married. Sasa kama mbaya, mbaya, you know. So I feel like um, I, I need to know whether the church also has a plan for, let's talk to the single people on their own and say, mm. we're dealing with the ladies, we're dealing with the men, we bring them still together before we get to that place. Because some of these things you're saying that... Um, knowing uh, how somebody spends, if we're discovering at Ndoa, I might just walk away, <laughs> you know, or I might now be like, 
there's already been uh, uh, some uh, banana planted at my parents' uh, uh, homestead. I can't go, you know. So I, I, I kind of wonder how we can now work on the people as individuals prior to this so that you kind of know the right questions to ask. Because a lot of mm. times I find the singles want to date, but they don't want to ask the right questions or they do not know what are the questions you should be asking to know what whether this is somebody ask. you should yeah. date. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And maybe as we come back to past time, um, is to say, I think sometimes you uh, I found some of the singles, especially in their 30s and 40s, are just so desperate to get married that even though they see some signs, they would say, I'd rather deal with that. You know, I want to be called Mrs. Or I want to be to have a wife and time is running out. And they're just so desperate to get to the altar uh, that some of those matters, I uh, will sort them out when we get married. Uh, and um, uh, in a short while, we'll come back to you, Kaleche, as well. And you will tell us some of the things you will tell uh, your younger self. And so the younger ladies, uh, some advice that you would give them uh, around this matter. But let me read uh, one or two things before we come to the Moredis to answer that. Um, uh, Freddie uh, is talking about uh, self-entitlement -ent and how that affects relationships. Uh, negatively, Rita is saying those points are super, Kaleche. Uh, you're doing a good job. Masi Gaki is saying, with lots of thugs mis uh, miscarading uh, after as decent uh, after decent singles and leading them to the altar, but with a mission to con and slave, uh, or a decent man or woman and waste uh, their lives. Uh, so uh, I guess people have uh, gone through a lot of experiences and maybe as we come to uh, the Moridis, as you answer what um, uh, Kaleche asked, huh? um, Pastor Carol, let me, let me ask, is it okay for a woman to say, this man doesn't have much money now, but I see potential. <laughs> Let's work on that. <laughs> you said that was your story. That's your story right there. <laughs> she married me broke. <laughs> there are a lot of potential. <laughs> when we got married and, and um, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I have had uh, older women saying is that, hey, you know, you cannot even look at potential now. Uh, mm -hmm. As you know, we are beyond potential at this point. If a man is 40 and we're still talking about potential, <laughs> it is, it's too late. <laughs> There's no more. <laughs> That's what I have had old women saying. So <laughs> that is what I have had women saying. And um, whereas, Maybe when, when, when you're a little bit younger and you're both starting mm. off, then, you know, you really have nothing, you know. Oh. Uh, you're all broke, all of you. You're all walking or driving, you know. You're, and so you're, you're, you're really looking at potential and hoping that things pan out. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I mean, I, I, I feel it. I, I really feel it, you know, for the older woman who's going to look and say, you know what, probably companionship. Mm -hmm is uh, more important than money at this particular point. And, and I feel it, I feel it for that kind of a person uh, mm. because you know, you're looking, you know what, I'm, I'm getting older and um, you know, I, I like a child, it happens to women who are you know, just before you hit your forties or even early forties and you say, I want a child and I don't get this child out of wedlock. And so mm. I truly really hear you know, that kind of a woman and, and mm. being in that kind of a predicament. And so yeah. um, my answer may be a little bit controversial, I don't know. But mm -hmm. um, I think what we say basically is uh, when you're looking for a mate, uh, we, 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 we look at um, some criteria. Number one, mm. master, are, are you both uh, committed to God? You know, are you both submitted mm. to God? Do you both mm. know God? And then the second thing that we look at is uh, purpose. Can you walk towards something together? And so I don't think we have ever talked about money in, in that conversation. And um, I'm not saying that you, you know, you're, you're, you're going for somebody who is kabisa, you know, <laughs> deadbeat. Um, but I think there's much more to look at uh, in terms of are they submitted? What is their character? And can we work towards something? So I think that would be my, my answer for that. Okay. Kind of 
Okay. Mm. And I think here I'm talking for some of the men, Kaliche, because they're not lazy. They're working hard, but their business is not working. And uh, yeah. past time, as you answer, Kaliche, you can also answer this. I've seen a trend in the last few years. I've worked with a few men who are my friends uh, who uh, for a long time were taking care of the bills in the house because they had a good business. And suddenly the business goes down. And now the lady yeah. is the one taking care of things as he tries to put together his business. And then the lady tells him, you know, uh, you need to leave my house right now uh, yeah. because you don't have oh. much. Uh, you know, you're providing, you're not uh, uh, contributing. And, and yet this this man has been working and now it's not like he's lazy if he's just a lazy guy watching uh you know netflix all day that's a character issue uh, but he has potential it's just a business hasn't taken off past time wow well, let me answer colleges it's easier <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, but, but thank you <laughs> well i'll start with her I think what I'll say is you're right. I think uh, the church does have to equip. We, we must equip, uh, not even just our single people, we must, we must equip at the level of our children. Huh? Um, yeah. We must equip parents to equip their children because that's where it starts. Um, mm. And, and um, I think the whole thing about money, we often, dis we, we make it not a spiritual issue. We make it almost mm. like a thing for you guys out there, come and let's teach you about God. But Jesus talked about money more than almost any other topic. He, yeah. And the Bible is full of wisdom about, about how to manage our money. And I find that, you know, Solomon in Proverbs says, money answers all things. Uh, when you don't mm -hmm. understand money, you will make a mess of your life. And so mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've, I've written a book called uh, Financial Fitness, uh, another one called Financial Foundations. Those are not to couples, they're to everybody. And it's just basic wisdom about uh, money uh, we've also written a book called uh, um what finders keepers yeah. and that's about the questions to ask when you're dating you know uh here are some questions you need to be asking people these are the conversations you have to have <laughs> with a person yeah. when you're dating. Uh, but i think your bigger point is that the church must equip I, I think we can't just wait for guys to come to the altar and then tell them here are the mistakes you've made yeah I, I, exactly i think it's it's important that we we, we realize that the conversation has to happen earlier. And like you say, from when they are younger, the children are younger and understand what is money, what does it mean to you? What have you learned about it and mm -hmm. how you should converse about it? Because I think from a singles perspective, half the mm -hmm. time I am open with a lot of things, but when it comes to the money talk, and I'm in my forties, it still scares me to date. Yep. I still mm -hmm. get very scared. Because I'm like, <laughs> you, picked that, you picked that from somewhere. You saw that being modeled somewhere and it became you mm. without even you knowing that. Uh, yeah. Because if you sat around a table with parents who talked about it openly, who equipped mm. you openly, yeah. you'd have a very different perspective, you see. Yeah. And so yeah. I think those are things that we must be in the process of, of, of teaching. So I love the fact that you're talking about this, Pastor S. I think with the... So, with the about yeah, the guy, maybe Pastor M, as you, as yeah. you answer that... Um, uh, I feel like a lot of times the issue is not the money. The issue okay. is the character of the person. Because mm. you can have a guy who has a lot of money, but his character is awful. And in a few years, you're going to be in trouble. Or you could have a guy who doesn't, his business is not taken off, but you're such a character and work ethic. And in a few years, you'll have a lot more to show together. Well, I was going to say that, you know, I think what happens is, a person is tested by power mm -hmm. and by success. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of the woman that you talked about, that's what really happened. Just, and, and it's exactly what you're saying. Her character was finally revealed because now she was the one succeeding. And it's not like she changed. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the man might even be saying, my wife changed. Actually, that's who she was all along. You just didn't know. And what happened is when you got power, um, we always say you can always know a person's character by the way they handle power. Um, and that's why you'll always find sometimes it's even a watchman who has a bit of power and they make sure everybody knows I'm the watchman. <laughs> and, this, and so I think that that, that whole thing about um, not lording over each other, uh, mm -hmm. you, you need to understand that this is a devil's plan for you. Uh, gender mm -hmm. wars are actually demonic. This is what the devil intended mm -hmm. because God created us and he created us and he called it good. Our relationships, mm -hmm. not just husband and wife, but men and women mm -hmm. are supposed to be mm -hmm. harmonious planet is blessed when our relationships work together when we fight mm -hmm. the devil wins. 
And so one mm -hmm. of the things we need to understand is when I come into this thing, uh, seeing my husband as the enemy or my wife mm -hmm. seeing me as, you know, there's a problem in that place. And the, when I win and she loses, we both lose. So if, yeah. if my husband is, is struggling with his self-esteem because he's lost his job as a wife, mm -hmm. it's my job to care mm -hmm. for that guy. It's my job to tell him mm -hmm. I believe in you. It's my job to say, look, yeah. you're, going to, you're going to make it. And you know, it's my job even to just remove any threat he's feeling. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest, ladies who are listening to this, for men, you need to understand the gender difference. For us, our mm -hmm. success at work is intrinsic to who we are as human beings. God created mm -hmm. us very interestingly and different. For a woman, mm -hmm. and I think for the men who are listening, I need to say this, the success you have in relationships is intrinsic to who you are as a person. And so mm -hmm. when a woman is not succeeding too much in her career, but her relationships are wholesome and phenomenal mm -hmm. and she's loved, that woman is thriving. When a man yeah. is not succeeding so much at home, but he's doing extremely well in his career life, that man is thriving. And it's not because <laughs> they're evil, it's just the way God created us. So when you see a man lose a job, just look out because depression can easily follow. Uh, and you may be looking at him and saying, come on, just get a grip, man. I mean, you get a job. Mm -hmm. but not understanding mm -hmm. that this guy, right now at the core of who he is as a person, he's feeling like a failure. <laughs> Now, when you yeah. come in and start lording it over him, you are destroying mm. your marriage. You're being the foolish woman who destroys mm. her own home. So mm, I think yeah. those understanding those differences allows you to become empathetic um, mm -hmm. when, you, when, you, when you see your spouse uh, going through a challenge in the area that is so core to them. Mm. Wow. Well, so much to talk about. Uh, Kalechi, we are coming to you to give some advice to the younger women and the single women, yeah. just mistakes you've seen them make and how they would handle this thing. But just a thing I, I usually like to say um, is that, um, uh, uh, I think past time alluded to it, uh, that uh, the people you date or you get attracted to, uh, they are a great revelation of who you are. Uh, because, um, uh, f uh, you know, birds of the same feather flock. Uh, so when you find yourself hanging out with someone and later you, have, they have a lot, you realize they have a lot of issues, you ask yourself, mm -hmm. so what issues attracted me to this person? Uh, and then mm -hmm. secondly, opposites attract. Uh, mm. So maybe there's something you saw in that person that you didn't have uh, that attracted mm. you to them. So really, mm. when you look at the people you have dated or hung out with in relationships, uh, mm. it's a study on yourself. Uh, it's looking, it's a mirror of who you really are. And now you need to uh, deal with yourself. Now, there's so many questions around the trouble of um, money within marriage uh, and some of the ways to deal with that because of those who may be in trouble but i think that will probably be a subject of uh, next week uh, uh, part yeah. two. Uh, but <laughs> kaleche what is the advice to the younger women and in this area um i think um w what you've talked about uh how we are a reflection of who we interact with and who we date has been one of the mm -hmm. toughest things for me to even deal with on my own because I think knowing my background of dating is that mm -hmm. I am very quick to see if this, this, our values are aligned and whether we are pulling towards the same, the same place. So what has happened mm -hmm. in my life is that I won't have long stretched out relationships. And so mm -hmm. I kept, uh, my mother kept asking me actually, then the, the SI unit here is you. So what are you doing to, to, uh, to make yourself in this situation where you meet people in two, three months, you're like, that's not going anywhere. What is it? So I took some time to, to, to work on myself. And this sadly came for me after my, mm -hmm. I hit my 40th. And that's when mm -hmm. I asked myself, are you in love with the idea of love itself? And I found that that was key. I was in that place where I thought that I just need to have love. And once we're in love, it will work. Obviously, that was all nonsense because it didn't work. <laughs> so I had to take a step back and say, okay, you can't just be in love with the idea of being in love. And I find a lot of mm. the young people today feel that they are half a person if they don't have a relationship. Mm -hmm. They feel that you're not, you're not doing well if you can't mm -hmm. say you're dated or there'll be something wrong with you if you're not mm -hmm. in a relationship. So they end up jumping from one relationship to the next to the next. And that's something mm. I would tell my younger self, like you can't start jumping from one place to the other. 
I did start mm-hmm. dating pretty late. Um, mm-hmm. First serious uh, relationship, or actually now saying I have a boyfriend. I think mm-hmm. I was uh, 25. I mm-hmm. had uh, I had kept away for a very long time, but that again is a result of my mother. You will get pregnant, and so I was like, no, boys, boys, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know so yeah. that's how that's how i was dealing with it. so by the time i decided to start dating and after the mm-hmm. first relationship kind of didn't work because uh, i felt like okay we're not pulling in the same direction i kind of mm-hmm. became that person who was now just jumping from one to the next to the next if i see any sign that i saw in the past guy i'm off i'm off mm-hmm. and 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 so i'd say to the younger person there is nothing mm-hmm. wrong with you if you are not mm-hmm. dating because you'd rather date yeah. right than to mm-hmm. date wrong a million and one time, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd, I'd rather you take some time out and work on understanding, first of all, why do you want to be in this relationship? What are you mm-hmm. feeling that you are lacking? Are you even mm-hmm. ready to work on something serious? Because I don't believe in dating for fun or just because I want to date with a purpose. So first, are you even ready to become a wife? Because I used to say, I want to get married. I want to get married. But I don't think I knew what this marriage would be. So therefore, I was not ready. And God will not give you something that you're not ready for. So I kept hitting the wall, but I was running into the wall by myself, you know, <laughs> because I was pushing for something because I thought it's what I'm supposed to have. I thought it's what I'm supposed to do. So the other thing I would... Um, then tell uh, the young girls, this is not something that I did, but I, I, I mean, there's two folds. There's the one I did and the one that they're doing. So I'll deal with what they're doing uh, right now is, is saying that they want somebody who's going to be able to take care of everything financially for them. And mm-hmm. I say to them, there is a joy in being able to know that there are things you can do for yourself. And that if mm-hmm. this person comes into your life they're coming to complement what you are already doing i feel mm-hmm. like it's important to have a standard and value for yourself and say mm-hmm. this is what i like and therefore it completes me i don't want to reduce myself or i don't want to over project myself there's a mm-hmm. time i used to think that i should not buy a big tv i used to have mm-hmm. uh, you know the, the box thing for a very long time <laughs> Because I thought, no, if so I, that you don't scare if, men. Yes, uh, yes, and mm. I, I, I really discovered that it's, it's, it's really wrong. Because why should I deny myself in the name of waiting for this person? What if this person comes and says that is the box you will stay with because you like it? He's doing what he thinks <laughs> you like because you showed him that that is something you are okay with. So I realized that actually I should be able to live a life. Um, where I'm happy or I'm able to provide the things that I like but that doesn't mean that I don't want to share that with somebody else or I don't want somebody to come and we complement each other and have a dream to do better because what I yeah. feel in, 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 in when you're in your 40s and maybe you've worked and you're, you've kind of established a little life for yourself the guys mm-hmm. tend to think that then where do I fit in because you, mm-hmm. you seem to be doing well you seem mm-hmm. to be able to take care of everything financially. And as you guys yeah. have said, a man views his, his uh, power or his strength. Everything is around his job and his money. And it gives him the ability to be this man because he's hunted and gathered mm-hmm. and that's what he has. But mm-hmm. I don't believe that as a woman, I'm looking to take that power away from you. By all means, yeah. come, let's yeah. make this even better. Yeah. That's so true. I'd that's say true. To, to that young girl that mm-hmm. keep working on yourself. And when you will meet the person who is your equal or you're able to complement each other, then it will work. Then it will work. Excellent. Uh, I think it's a caution to all the gold diggers, uh, the girls who are just looking for money, uh, Mm -hmm. not a relationship, that you're going to, you may have the gold, but you're going to have lots of uh, soul wounds. Uh, You're going to be hurt. And uh, at the end of the day, you'd rather be happier uh, then have money uh, because yeah. money cannot buy joy. Uh, first time we're coming towards a close. Um, and lots of questions here a lot about the conflicts couples have around money. But as I said, I think we'll leave that to next week, part two. But maybe we can finish with um, 
are you saying to us there is a statement that uh, Modoni made, uh, Wakina Niri, uh, has said women are better money managers. And then after she made that comment, several other people have debated around it. Uh, so maybe just helping us know what are the mistakes women make around money, uh, just because we are male and female and the mistakes men make around money, just the our different approaches to money that doesn't help our relationships. We can start with you, Pastor Kyle. <laughs> First of all, I don't know whether it is an entirely true statement that um, mm. women make our better money managers. Mm. Uh, mm. Definitely women uh, will appreciate money because of the security. For them, security is a big thing what I would say, maybe, maybe women might not be as risk takers. They may not take the very big risks that men are going to take. And so they may play it a little bit safe. And because of that, they may not um, lose money in the same way that mm -hmm. maybe guys will lose money. So I don't know if that is what she meant. But as far as managing money, managing money, when we talk about it, we're talking about uh, being able to uh, have a budget, uh, create a budget, mm -hmm. stick to a budget, um, and not just that, uh, about investments, uh, growing in your financial literacy so that you can mm. even understand what kind of investments you need to be making in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, mm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I think um, I would talk about management more in terms of um, risk. Uh, and say maybe guys may have a higher risk appetite and can lose a lot more. But as far as managing money, I think it's, it's an open playing ground. It's a level playing ground for both men and women, um, because then it just has to do with growing in your financial literacy. And that's open um, to everyone. Yeah. All right, uh, past time as you answer, you know, I've uh, handled a few cases in marriage where uh, the man just took a risk and invested a lot of money, did not even tell the wife, and then it went bad. And now eventually he says, and the wife just wants to get out of there. <laughs> you know, God, God is a genius. He made us to need each other. Um, if, if the world was only women, it would be a secure, safe, well-run place. If the world was only men, it would be full of crazy advancement and big leaps. But you know, those are strengths. The problem is when you come into a marriage and you don't see those as strengths, you start fighting each other. Uh, you fight your wife's need for security because she's actually God-given. She's there to help you, to keep you from burning up your home in your quest for conquest. <laughs> and so when you listen to her, if this man had listened to his wife in the first place, he wouldn't be here fearing to tell her that he's lost uh, the family fortune. Uh, and then the wife also understands, if, if not for, if I left to myself, this place will be, will be safe and will never achieve greatness as a family. We're not just created to be safe, we're created to make a difference in the planet. And yeah. I think there's a place where when the genders work together, in fact, when Genesis talks about God's image, it says male and female in the image of God. God's image is not male, neither is it female. It's when we come together and work together, God is expressed. So there's something beautiful about each of us, uh, but there's also a dysfunction when we allow, you know, when we ignore or stifle one voice as opposed to the other. So I think that's mm -hmm. a key thing that we say is, look, you need to actually understand uh, and, and you know, one of the things I always say, and I'll, just a little side note, sometimes I even tell people who are going through, as when you're mm -hmm. single, and mm -hmm. you find I've got so many issues, I've got so many doubts, I've got so many fears, I've got, I don't even see, I've got so many blind spots. I've actually mm -hmm. sent some people to, to see a counselor, and I've said, look, book in a couple of sessions, go to a money counseling mm -hmm. or one of those counseling places, and just book mm -hmm. yourself in for a couple of sessions to sort out mm -hmm. some of the stuff inside, to, just to help mm -hmm. you begin to understand your biggest fears. Uh, mm -hmm. and the things that your family has brought, the things you're not seeing. Uh, again, mm -hmm. it's all that whole thing of working on me and not working on the other person. So mm -hmm. yeah, that would be my thought there is we need to actually understand that there's a strength. Your God, When God gives you somebody, mm -hmm. it's because he's looked at you and said, my goodness, look at that beautiful mm -hmm. lady. She's amazing. <laughs> She's incredible. Mm -hmm. I have just the thing to sort out the few issues I see in this person. God gives you a spouse not to make you happy, but to make you holy. And it's to make you become the person he wants you to become. So when your spouse comes and starts rubbing against you to make you holy, rather than running away from that pain, <laughs> you have to just stick in there and allow this person to be, help you become your God. If you're an impatient person, you just want to jump yeah. in. Because of that, yeah. you tend to be a gambler. 
let your spouse yeah. slow you down and mm -hmm. force you to have to explain in detail every move you're making. It's actually for mm -hmm. your good. So I think that yeah. that whole thing of understanding, you're not the enemy, you're actually my advocate. The enemy is out there. The mm -hmm. two of us are actually supposed mm -hmm. to succeed together. That mindset, if we can get a couple to understand it, we, we have a winning mm -hmm. couple. And that's, that's the kind of mindset yeah. you come at. Well, I, I love it, but unfortunately we are coming to the end of this. So we'll give uh, you guys to make some um, uh, final comments, uh, just uh, take out, and then I'm going to wrap uh, up for us. Uh, let me remind you, uh, many of you, thank you so many comments here, uh, you know, hundreds of them. We just don't have the time to read all of them, but we have uh, picked up the questions and we're gonna be using some of them next week. I think a lot of questions around openness, first time saying, you guys are open, but most couples are not open. Uh, so I think next week we'll revisit some of the challenges that make money uh, a greater factor in divorce than even infidelity. Uh, we're going to get there. And then next week, uh, we're going to get down to some of the uh, challenges. Uh, those who are uh, to be married, uh, Kaliche, uh, the younger ones uh, are making yeah. that is just messing up their relationship. So Kaliche, just last words for today. Yeah day and uh, we're looking forward to part two okay um so i'd say the the key thing that uh, i'm i'm learning here is that each of us have a money language and based on your money language it is important to ask the right questions to understand what this person's money language this person that you are liking and want to get into of course then i would uh, throw in this question for next week when is the right time to have the money question when you're dating? So that's a question mm -hmm. to both uh, the Boredis and uh, Pastor S so that you guys can tell me when is the right time to bring that up mm -hmm. because I'm sure a lot of people will, will want to know be because it's contentious. But um, mm -hmm. I think to wrap it up is the most important thing you can do is work on self and identify for yourself what is your money language, what mm -hmm. are you afraid of <laughs> dealing with, what scares mm -hmm. you the most and if you can work on that before you present yourself to someone else yeah okay well uh past time and pastor carol last words just to remind everyone uh for transform nations we have a different programs going on as uh, which is for the ladies uh, like the woman enough uh, we have man enough for the men and we have intentional dad and intentional mom uh especially for mothers who are raising sons uh, and then we have the boys to men program but you can check that out uh, also to remind you about uh, the Moridis um, couples and money uh, if, if you would uh, those of you who are having challenges or preparing to get married don't wait until the challenges come uh, I would encourage you to enroll for that and uh, get to learn so that money doesn't kick you out of each other uh, Pastor Carol last words thank you uh, I think one of the things that we have uh, realized in this time of COVID is that um, families have had faulty foundations. I think when people have had to live together, to come together, and they have understood that. And my, my last words would be, uh, I know that COVID is beginning, we're beginning to feel like we're getting to a, 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 a new normal, people are going back to work. My caution is this, don't wait for the next crisis. If there is a crack in that foundation, it is there. If your, if your money is not married, that is one of the hugest cracks that we have discovered uh, during this COVID season. So don't wait mm. for the next crisis to reveal that to you again. Just begin to sort it out. Take the, the courage, take that step to begin resolving uh, these financial issues in your marriage. Amen. Yeah. I think, I think what I'd say is, um, I mean, somebody asked why we are so open. Part of the reason is when we got married, we found it impossible to find couples who were open and who could share real stuff. We found people who are full of platitudes and full of Bible verses, and nobody was willing to tell us how marriage actually worked. It was so frustrating, and yet we're in church, you know. And so when we, as that, at that early stage, we said, we made a commitment and we said, God, if you help us survive this marriage, <laughs> uh, if you help us get through this, we will. We promise that we will help couples. We are going to be as open as we can, and we want to just make our marriage a resource and a blessing. And so that's why we started the Ndoa uh, Couples Community. Uh, basically, 
Couples and money is, uh, is one of the things we do. There's NDOA, which is a marriage preparation or marriage enrichment program. And there's other things we do. But the biggest thing is we're committed to mentoring uh, couples mm -hmm. and helping them understand their leadership role as couples. So with your permission, Pastor S, I'll post something on the, uh, on, 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 on the Facebook uh, profile, uh, just on, on, your mm -hmm. on your page there. There's a number. If you just send a WhatsApp text to that number, uh, we'll, it's basically the way to join the couples. Cup, it's a mentoring community. And what we try and do is we just send stuff out that, that has helped us. And we just try and share things that we think will be helpful um, to couples and get it, get that. I mean, tell them about stuff that is useful. And so I'll just send that up. And it's, it's I, I, I think I've just pressed send. Um, so you'll see it over there. So, but for us is like, hey, mentors are everything. Mm -hmm. Find the right people around you that you mm -hmm. can ask questions. And for those of you who've been, I mean, I love how Kaleche said, you know, I made mistakes. So as a result, I want to be a resource for people behind me so that they don't make the mistake. And I think that's yeah. how we must be. Uh, I've lived that's in countries true. that have generations of great marriages um, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and great Christian marriages. And you can see the difference when people have that kind of platform. And so my mm -hmm. hope is that we will be able to mentor the next generation, like Khaled was saying, mm -hmm. and they will mentor the next. And maybe, if, uh, if, God willing, we'll get to a place where we've got some generations of good marriages and good yeah. relationships. Amen. It becomes yeah. normal and stops being abnormal mm -hmm. to see happily married people uh so that's that's really our prayer amen well um we have to bring it to a close it's a very good conversation i think lots of you have come in because all of us want a good relationship no one wants to cry on the pillow at night uh, because yeah. of the challenges they are facing uh with their spouses or, or with uh you know with their boyfriends out there and they go home and they cry uh, and we want to walk with you and help you build those good relationships and so welcome next week as we meet here same time uh, same team we're going to be uh, speaking. I know some of you have said we needed a young man uh, to represent the men as well, uh, so we might have one, but uh... <laughs> Uh, just to say uh, that these conversations are for your good. I would encourage you to sign up for Couples and Money and the different programs and get to watch Kaleche and the discussions that she has. And uh, welcome back uh, to Transform Nations next week. And thank you for all the comments. May the Lord bless you and may God give you good relationships. I end with the same verse that Pastor M quoted. Um, uh, God created us and, and, and formed us, uh, uh, male and female, in his own image and brought us together so that we may work together. Uh, and there's so much good when we work together, not against each other. Uh, and if we find ourselves in a place where we are fighting and con uh, conflicting with each other, we just need to stop, look at ourselves and know that it can be sorted and build good relationships for ourselves, uh, for our children, uh, and for the greater good of the community. God bless you, and uh, join me next week uh, with uh, Sober Sunday as we continue these conversations. God bless you, and thank you very much, Kaleche Mumo. So excited thank to you. have you here. Moridis and my pastors, thank you for the honor. God bless you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. You can say a quick prayer for many of us, uh, you know, just going through hard times in their relationships around these matters. Sure. Lord, we just want to thank you for this uh, amazing evening. Thank you for uh, Pastor Simon and just his venture, his desire to just add so much value to people uh, from who are watching this from across the world. And Lord, I just want to say a very special blessing and prayer over anyone right now who's watching this from a place of pain, uh, mm -hmm. really struggling in their relationship right now. Lord, we mm -hmm. pray that wherever they are, you would just give them a sense of encouragement. I pray, Lord, for just a sense that God is with them. They would actually sense your presence right now, sense your encouragement, and know that, Lord, it's not over, that you still have a plan and a good plan for them. I pray that, Lord, you would uh, give them uh, good mentors. You would help them even just to be able to uh, shift alignment from their spouse to themselves, to start working on themselves. And I pray that, Lord, uh, as a result of this conversation, there would be a nugget they would take home with them that would completely bring the transformation that they need. And so we just ask mm -hmm. your courage, your encouragement, your, your, your comfort, 
And even just your a sense of joy, I speak a sense of joy over everyone who's watching this right now. And I pray that, Lord, even when we meet again, uh, that, Lord, there will just be testimonies of what God has done in this week that is coming. So we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, good night, everyone. See you next week, same time, same place. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.